Hey kids, Pastor Brian here with another member of our Revelation 7 team, Pastor Danny Kilgore. As we talked about last week, our Revelation 7 team is a group of pastors from other churches who represent various cultures that help us experience the blessing of God's people that come from every tribe and every language and every nation and every people. So welcome, Pastor Danny, and we are so glad to have you. Can you just give us a quick overview of a little bit about who you are, your family, your church, maybe something fun we should know about you in general? All right, so hi everyone. I'm Danny Kilgore, and I serve as a pastor at Marin Covenant Church located in California. Um, I'm really excited that you um, invited me to be here with you all. Um, I am married. I have a husband. His name is Will. We've been married for 12 years, and I have a daughter who is six, and her name is Harper Avery. Um, one of the things that are my favorite things to do is we eat. I love food. I love all types of food. And holiday food is my favorite. <laughs> Perfect, because actually that's what I want to ask you about. Um, we're talking about what Christmas means to me. And uh, we love to hear what Christmas means to you in terms of favorite food. And mm -hmm. then uh, how about a favorite gift you got? Okay, so I will say that my favorite Christmas food is our Christmas ham. Um, it's a Dr. Pepper uh, honey baked ham that is a staple in our house. Like every family member on Christmas is making that ham and it is so good. I'm even salivating as I'm thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. And, Pepper, I love it. Yes, Dr. Pepper ham. Now, I don't, I can't say I have a favorite gift, but I do have a gift that is memorable that become that became like an expected favorite. Like I didn't always like enjoy it, but I enjoyed getting it because it was something to look forward to. And it was my grandmother. She would always send some old bright orange furry or shaggy sweater or jacket or coat of some sort every single year. I think all up until college, I got this, this something that was either bright orange, shaggy or furry. And sometimes all of the three. And so, when I won't, when I wouldn't get it, I'm like, where is it? And then here it comes. It'd be late shipping to me, but it'd be come, it would come. And so that would probably be, you know, one of my most memorable gifts that became my favorite gift because it was something to look forward to. Like, yep, there it is, right on time. <laughs> That's awesome. I love it. <laughs> All right. Well, in terms of gifts, you actually tell a story that I got to read about from my, from your sermon today. And I'd love to hear a little bit more in person or live here about that gift that you got that actually was a little maybe disappointing because of some things that were going on in your family at that time. Yeah, so I mentioned in my sermon that um, on the year of 1992, uh, my grandmother got into a really bad car accident early in the year. And so um, as a result of her injuries and her, her ther physical therapy that she had to go through, by the time we got to Christmas, things just wasn't the normal. A lot of the traditions just weren't um, as executed as they would because she was the one that made sure those things happened. And so one of those things being our Christmas tree being full of gifts. And unfortunately, as a second grader, I was sad because I only got one gift that year. I got one gift, it was a uh, my size princess Barbie doll. And I liked it, but I was still sad because I wanted more, I wanted more gifts. And although I didn't vocalize it, um, my grandmother could still sense my sadness. And so at the end of the night, at the end of Christmas and right before bedtime, my grandmother called me into her room and she apologized to me. She apologized to me saying she was sorry that Christmas didn't go um, as well as I, I'd hoped, she'd hoped it to be. And that um, my grandfather was actually gonna take me the next day out to go and get some more things but she told me to make her a promise and she said I promise me that no matter what you get on Christmas that you'll always give God thanks for it and it was for me it was like okay yeah okay grandma I hear you but she could tell that I wasn't listening to her she saw she could tell I was listening with my ears but I wasn't listening with my heart and she repeated it and she said I want you to promise me that no matter what you get on Christmas you'll thank God for it all. And at that moment, I realized what she, what lesson she was actually trying to teach me. She's trying to teach me that 
we always give God thanks, no matter if we're disappointed, no matter if we're sad, because there's always something to give thanks to God for. And at that moment, I was reminded, yeah, I'm giving thanks because my grandmother's here. My grandmother's alive. My grandmother's, I'm still able to hug and, and hold her and all those different things. And so then in 2005, when she passed away, I still remember that because she passed away two days before Christmas. And so that's a promise that I still held on to. Mm. That's huge. And quite a miracle that she survived the accident, right? And then that she was able to teach you in the midst of that, like her own recovery. She was still thinking about how to shape and teach you and help you understand Christmas. Sounds like an awesome granny. Like, Yeah, yeah, she was. She definitely is uh, um, one of the reasons why um, my spiritual formation is um, what it is. She was very, very um, intricate in introducing me to Christ and helping me to remain on that journey for sure. Yeah. Well, I know that that story kind of came to mind as you were looking at some of the Christmas story that we're talking about today that you preached on. Could you tell us a little bit more about that connection and how you see those two relating? Yeah. So I think for me, when I, when I looked at the, um, the scripture in Luke chapter two, um, I, the, the proclamation that the shepherds were proclaiming, the, the Christ has been born, the Messiah has come, even in the midst of all of the things that Joseph and Mary were experiencing. The, the, they were like literally fleeing because they were trying to protect their child and how the three kings, the shepherds, everyone was knew of all these prophecy and knew the, the dangers and things like that. But yet they still found a way to proclaim the goodness, the joy, the, the excitement that the Messiah had come. And I, for me, I think that that was a, a connection to the story, to my Christmas story about my grandmother, because even in the midst of all of the sadness, even in the midst of all of the, the pain and the struggle that we were experiencing from the car accident that my grandmother had experienced, we were still able to proclaim the goodness of God, that gosh, we are still together as a family. We still have a roof over our heads. We're still, God is still good. The Messiah is still um, alive and and through his power our grandmother is alive and so you know that was a story for me that not only shared about storytelling but also that in a story there's good news there's there's good news to tell and um, if you just listen with your spirit you'll find that good news and it makes sense then because when talking to you about getting ready for all of this, you were actually the one that brought to me the idea of telling stories, that one of the big things that Christmas has meant to you is telling stories. And so this week, we're talking a lot about telling stories in our Advent bags. We have ideas for people to share their stories. A lot of them are from you, actually, Pastor Danny. And so I'd love to hear kind of what you do with stories. They're such a big part of your life and growing up. And now, I know you have some ways that you like to tell stories with your family. Could you share a little bit about that as we're wrapping up? Yeah, so, you know, my daughter is um, six, like I said, and so her form of storytelling comes out of the form of art. She loves drawing. She loves painting. Her happy place is anything she can create with, with her hands and painting and pencils and crayons and markers and all those things, and so... Um, one of the things we started last year was telling stories through pictures. And so we would allow like, okay, you tell a story. And so she would draw something and she'd tell a story. And then I would draw something yeah. that I could draw. But <laughs> and I would tell a story and my, my husband would do the same thing. And so um, that is like one of the things that we kind of a tradition that we've established. I don't know how long it's going to last. But we'll see. But it's been a fun way to get us telling a story of something fun that has happened over this past year or something you remember over this past year, something you're excited about. And we do it through not words, but pictures. And because I truly believe that a picture is worth a thousand words. And so uh, being able to draw the picture and my daughter's still at the point of learning how to read and write. And so it's helpful for her and being able to participate in that storytelling element of our tradition and our family. I love that. And I think so many people sometimes struggle to tell a story because they don't have the words, mm -hmm. but sometimes you can if you start drawing it, or maybe if you even 
Maybe some people would act it or something. You don't always have to use words if that's not your thing. Some people are great at words, but I love that. That's a, that's a really cool tradition. Yeah, thanks. Well, thank you for encouraging us. And I can't wait for the stories that we're gonna be sharing with our families and in our groups today. Um, but it's great to have you and we love the stories and really wanna keep telling each other and hearing the stories that remind us of God's faithfulness and goodness. So thanks for encouraging us and pointing us toward that, Pastor Danny. We love being with you. Thank you so much for having me and Merry Christmas, everyone. Thank you.